How are you? Good, how are you? Good. That was easy. This is my first time doing dual screen IG Live. Well, I got to give you a huge thumbs up because for those of you who are watching who haven't done this before, you gave excellent instructions well, on how you. to do it. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thanks for pushing me, okay? Because you're like, look, I need questions, et cetera. So I'm like, yeah, she's right. Let me just, let me put some stuff together <laughs> and send that off to you. So that definitely will help for future presenters. So thank you so much for requesting that. You did an amazing job. So. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to jump on a little earlier. Um, I know we start, we stated to start at 12. Some people are joining. And also the video will be downloaded and uploaded to our Lady Boss Roundtable Facebook group. And if you would like that video as well, I can send it to you. That would be excellent. So, and we're looking forward to connecting with your members that are in your Facebook group, as well as the ones that are here on Instagram. Definitely. And thank you. I saw that you said, um, I asked, how did you hear about this? You said that you have been following, supporting for years. So I really, really appreciate that. Well, we I'm love always... I'm sorry, go ahead. We love supporting other Chicago women. I mean, I, I must yeah. say, you know, be, being grateful to have such a supportive community here mm -hmm. and just having so many women who are entrepreneurs in Chicago. It's a big mm -hmm. world but I have to give props to people who live in my own city. <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree. So how are you doing during this time? Like, how is everything going for you? How are you adjusting, like, personally, not business yet? Well, I mean, I think that the hardest thing is going through the ebbs and flows of wanting to be able to be with other people. Mm -hmm. I admit that uh, personally, I am somebody that actually is a very focused person. So I like taking, uh, I like taking steps to even do things in my personal life and really getting to focus on them at one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, for example, like just painting, like I really want to finish painting my fireplace mm -hmm. and it's a big fireplace. And so just saying like, personally, it's like, that'd be the type of thing where it's like, once it started frustrating me or don't want to do it, I'd like walk away and go do something else, like go mm -hmm. to the store, or go out to eat or something. But now since we're home, everything is just staring at you in the face. Yeah. So everything from I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I took a four hour nap yesterday. Yeah. Four hours. <laughs> That's how like this whole thing is just on a daily basis, just draining, to be honest with you. I have a daughter who's one and a half, so I'm trying to make sure she's good while operating my different brands and businesses, taking care of home, obviously. It's a lot. We're getting through it, but it's a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. just the reality I mean, of it. I'm one that has, since I have elderly parents and since they both have immune compromise, we're taking mm. it very, we're taking yeah. it very seriously. And even if I wasn't, I'd be one that's so sympathetic to that community that I'd want to take it seriously for them. But definitely the longer it goes on, the more you're like, oh, like it just, I just want to be able. And, you know, you're saying that you have a one and a half daughter. Yeah. You know, one thing that I know, because I do work from home a majority of the time, mm -hmm. but I like being able to like go to the library and go to like a silent mm -hmm. reading room to like get a project finished or I like going like when my daughter goes to dance to Panera for like an hour and just like mm -hmm. knocking something out. And here there's just, there's just so much distraction, even though you don't have anything else to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. I will admit this time I've got so many projects done that I've been pushing off for months and months. Some of them even years. Oh my so gosh. I'm glad there's to that. I'm sorry. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. There's so much that, I mean, it just depends. Like, I know we had our um, Lady Boss virtual community last Saturday. So it's basically, we just talk about our business, talk about the progress, talk about resources and tools. And one of the topics that we had was talking about, do you feel pressure to create during this time? And I do, I will admit, but it's, perfectly fine for someone who does not want to create. I don't want people to feel like they have to get something out there and they have to constantly be doing stuff. No, you can take this time to relax, to rest, to catch up on your rest. Take a four hour nap. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, 
yeah, definitely time to let the guilt go related to things. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the important things is not to compare yourself to mm -hmm. others because people are putting their energies into different things related to finishing a project or maybe scratching a pro. I mean, certainly for those of who, us who do like a lot of in-person things and stuff like that, yeah. they're swallowing that gulp of being like, well, it's not going to happen. So do I fill the time with trying to do something else that I would be doing something in person? Mm -hmm. Or do I just let it go and realize that right now is not the time to be beating yourself up over that? <laughs> so I know I definitely feel that way. Because with Chicago being such a seasonal city, yes, a lot of things that I had planned were just naturally canceled because mm -hmm. this is a busy time for us and the weather is beginning to get good. But these mm -hmm. events are just not happening. Right. I agree. Well, thank you for that update. Just on your personal life, how things are going. I'm sure other people want to know, like, how are we coping with everything that's going on? Well, of course, being empathetic to the people who are out there busting their tail to make sure that people are okay. And to the people and their families who are going through multiple things at this current moment. So we will transition now to talk about you, Brenda, to talk about, can you give me some background on yourself and your business and when you got started? So I have always been really into fashion and accessories and personal style since I was wee, 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 wee back as child. I mean, mm -hmm. if you do follow us or if you do learn, the other thing is, is I'm a real um, hopeless romantic and I'm a sentimental person at heart. So I have no problem sharing selfies of myself when I was like four years old with like the handbag and the matching shoes and the matching mm -hmm. coat. And my mom would say that, she dressed me up like that, but I was the one that always wanted the accessories. So I always, always wanted the plastic beads, the matching little purse, uh, never complained about putting the hat on. So personal style and fashion has always really been an important part of myself. But even though I've always specialized in selling products, all of my drive has always been service related to fulfilling some form of someone's need. Mm -hmm. So I started out with my first job selling ties at Jay Riggins. And that was where I really learned about personal style and how somebody could dress in details to really set themselves apart. You know, because mm -hmm. men's suits are all very much the same way, black, brown, gray. Right. And I would see how people would want to add cufflinks or ties or just little details to things. And I thought to myself at a very young age, I'm really onto something. Let's build great uh, wardrobe and personal style around things, but then let's use jewelry and accessories and things like that to really help someone stand out. Mm -hmm. So my business started, uh, I worked as a personal shopper. I graduated from college and everything else like that. I like to tell everybody that I I got my first job and my real success was because nobody wanted to be my friend. <laughs> I joke about that. Uh, I started as somebody who worked in the jewelry and the accessories department at Neiman Marcus, mm -hmm. but it was a commission-based environment. So I really delve into learning all about like accessories and jewelry and fashion and style because it was a commission-based environment. So you really in the very beginning had to prove yourself even to mm -hmm. your coworkers that you weren't going to steal their customers. And so again, so much of my business was around providing a really exceptional experience for the customer that people would just naturally come to me even though they were buying a product because I really listened to how mm -hmm. that product was going to change their life. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I left Neiman's. We mentioned a little bit of our personal life when we were mm -hmm. getting started. I had two daughters. Then I found myself a single mom mm -hmm. and I have no shame and that I was a huge fan of Money Saving Mom, when blogging just even became blogging. Mm -hmm. And I had heard about how to get yourself back on track with Dave Ramsey through her blog. And he joked about how that if you needed to make money to rebuild your nest egg, uh, you could put everything on eBay because you could always buy it back. Yeah. So yeah. I had an entire closet full of designer clothes and shoes and things like that and jewelry back from when I worked at Neiman's. And I started putting it on eBay. Love it. Yeah. And I then what happened was my accountant said to me while I was, I was teaching preschool to supplement my income so mm -hmm. that my kids 
could uh, go to school and I could get a discount for that. And my accountant said to me, because I'm not really here to give you personal advice. I can't really tell you what to do. Uh, but he goes, you made more money selling things on eBay last year than you did teaching preschool. Wow. He said, did you ever think about maybe doing wow. this full time? Because you seem to really enjoy the fashion and the jewelry aspect of things. Uh, he was like, I can't really tell you what to do, but I think maybe you should maybe rethink how you're spending your time doing things. Hmm. And that's really how my retail and my product based business was born. So I started on eBay. I moved to Etsy three years ago. I built my own Shopify site. Got to tell you, it's been a very, very long crawl, uh, but we do run a very successful business. And then I still do a lot of styling and I do a lot of style workshops on the side. Nice. So my business is really reciprocal as we like to put it. Are you still on eBay? No. no. Etsy? No. We do still have a small amount of things on Etsy and we okay. still also have, uh, we have a thriving Shopify shop. Nice. And what is your Shopify shop? It's vintage meat modern. Dot com or dot, is it dot yep. com or? Yep. Okay. Vintage meat modern dot com. So with Shopify, you can use your own URL. Does it, are you paying like a subscription to make sure like their branding isn't prominent? No, it, uh, the one thing about Shopify is it's very similar to like getting your own WordPress site through like your own blog or your own service based and everything. The only benefit of working with Shopify is it's built for e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So the things that you build your shop around like a template, like I still had to buy a theme and I still had to, uh, use a web developer and those types of things. But the benefit of using a Shopify site is it already has the cart built in. So the payment processing, those types of things. Yes, we do play a subscription for it once a month. I think it's mm -hmm. 70, not, I think it is. It's $79 a month. Mm -hmm. I graduated from the $29 a month plan to the $79 a month plan. And uh, from there, they handle the payment processing and uh, we add new product every single week because mm -hmm. the interesting thing about my business is that because we sell a collectible and we sell one of a kind vintage, people really get excited about mm -hmm. what the new thing is that we have. So throughout the years, we have found a balance between working what's best for us and then keeping the customers interested as well as serving their needs. Okay. With Shopify, um, do you, how do you market? Is there an audience already built in like Etsy? No. Okay. <laughs> no. That's why I said it's a long crawl. Okay. So uh, in the beginning, I think because we had so much success on Etsy and so much success on eBay uh, and even success at in-person events, mm -hmm. that I think that it, we naturally felt that we would be out there in the world the same way. Mm. Now, I do have to speak to somebody who, if you're looking for advice or suggestions or anything, remember when you're on eBay and when you're on Etsy, it's against their terms of service to let their let your customers know on there that you have your own website or your mm. own thing. Now, you can let them know that you have your own social media. Okay. So if I could go back in time and tell anybody anything, even if you start out on eBay or Etsy or anything else like that. Mm -hmm. still collect your own leads via social media mm -hmm. or on those platforms, let people know that your social media exists mm -hmm. because they will naturally find out like you do have a Shopify shop or you do have your own URL or you do have mm -hmm. your own events. So that was something that for a long time, I think we naturally thought things were going to move over. And that's really a learning curve thing. We uh, realized we were going to have to learn to drive our own traffic. And yeah. that took quite a lot of time and it still, still takes up a lot of our time. So. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing tips on your Shopify and just online. Like I am on everything except for Shopify. I don't have a Shopify account, eBay. And like I do some reselling. Um, so I'm on like Poshmark, things like that. Mm -hmm. And Etsy. And you're definitely right about letting them know about the, about your social sites. I even have, um, at the bottom um, of my announcement, letting them know about my email newsletter um, yeah. as well, because you always want to collect emails, because you never know when any of these platforms can go under. At least you'll have people's email accounts, which is gold. And you can, you know, obviously keep them informed of sales, new items, etc. So let's talk about consistency. 
Consistency is huge, especially during this time. How have you stayed consistent with your business? How have you stayed consistent with your Facebook community that you state that's very, very much thriving, especially during this time? So that's an interesting question because that kind of builds off what you just asked with, with Etsy and eBay and Shopify and social media. How I have remained consistent is that when I had to rethink how I was going to reach people, uh, I really liked Facebook. Mm -hmm. I liked Facebook even differently than I liked Instagram because I had a very personal product. So it was really easy to reply to comments. Mm -hmm. And that's just me personally talking about the user experience. I would share a photo of a woman wearing a vintage necklace and someone would tell their story in the comment about how they remembered watching Audrey Hepburn wear a necklace like mm -hmm. that. Or they remembered that their grandmother uh, had a triple strand of pearls. And it wasn't that it wasn't easy to respond on Instagram, but this is already speaking of consistency. Three years ago when Instagram was still just getting started and people were getting all worried about, did I have the right hashtags and things like that? Mm -hmm. I already had an audience that was built in, that was replying to me that didn't need a hashtag or anything else. So it wow. just became really mm -hmm. easy to start off a conversation. And that was the first thing I did to be consistent. Mm -hmm. The next thing I did was I learned that when we were already beginning to become consistent, these threads that I would have, they would start going on like a conversation. So I decided that I would keep the conversation going by really getting over my fear of videos and <laughs> lots of things and stuff yeah. like that. And I would put the topic in a Facebook Live and people would just start in on the topic. Mm -hmm. And so I decided based on my own family's needs, Wednesday night is the only night that uh, all of my kids would go to activities and they would be gone from six o'clock to 930. And my husband would also be home on time for the train that mm -hmm. on Wednesday nights, I would go live and I would always talk about whatever the newest jewelry that we had. Mm. And I developed having the longest, here's the consistency part, I have the longest running vintage jewelry show on Facebook that takes place on Wednesday nights. Oh my God. For over three years. Incredible. And it's been hard to stay consistent when there was only one eye watching me or mm -hmm. no eyes mm -hmm. watching me. Uh, <laughs> But I had made a commitment to myself that I would show up mm -hmm. and then I would rework my marketing schedule, vision, how we marketed it. I would rework how I did it mm -hmm. to try to show up for my customers and then also effectively have it translate to financial success so that we could continue to keep doing it. Right. So I said the consistency will be there, but we'll evolve either what we're providing or how we provide it or who we're providing it or how we're letting them know. But the one thing is we know that we'll show up and do it every week. Right. How did you market your community? Well, again, the conversation started based on what I saw people that were interacting with. And mm -hmm. I decided that I would make a conscious decision as that when we were talking about marketing it, we were going to invite those people to become part of our community because they were already interacting with us in a way that we could provide, again, genuine and authentic content. Part of what I learned was by interacting and taking time to really read the comments or really respond back to people was that even though we had a very large Facebook page with at that time, 20,000 plus likes, I think it's like around 28,000 now, is that just like, I don't want to, I don't like using the term funnels because I think everybody uses the term um, funnels, but yeah. I just like going through a sieve, mm -hmm. you have people who are interested at different levels. And the more I saw certain people were interested, I realized these were my people. Mm -hmm. So let's inter so let's invite them to an even smaller community so that we can really get the conversation going. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have consistently made an effort, just like we talk about like regular checklists we consistently invite those people to join our community. And then when we invite them to come to enjoy our community, we let them know the way that they can be involved in the community, mm -hmm. whether it's 
sharing pictures, meeting friends, joining roundtables, mm. webinars. But we also put out a survey of types asking them what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And then we decide here behind the scenes, I say we because now I have a team. I didn't mm -hmm. have a team at one time. Then we decide behind the team, is this an area of expertise that we can give value or information related to? Or is this outside of our scope of what we could comfortably provide to people? And financially, like, I mean, if they're asking us to do personal styling for all 3,000 plus members in the group, I don't have that many hours in the day, even though I'd like to. How do you, during this time, you stated that people come to your community to, you know, get away from everything that is going on, and it's like a breath of fresh air to them. How do you keep them excited and engaged to continue to come back? Do well, you I, think, oh, go ahead. I think the first of which is that we've had to pivot some things that, like you were mentioning in terms of projects, mm -hmm. we had to pivot some things to make some I guess you could say offline resources that we specialize in available to the online community. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I was hesitant to do that for two reasons. One, getting past the technology. I mean, as nice as it is to sit here with you, I really drag my feet with technology. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me like why I chose to do Facebook Lives instead of doing YouTubes or doing other things because you go live and yeah, it can be embarrassing if your kids are running in the background or your dog is barking or something, but that's it. It's the click of a button. Right. I always tell people like, it's easier to start with a Facebook Live than even necessarily going to YouTube and stuff like that because then you gotta find an editor, you gotta worry about, do you have an intro, an exit, all this yes. other stuff and everything. Uh, you've got to go back and you've got to read all the comments, you know, but at the same time, at a Facebook Live, you see people interacting, asking questions, those types of things right away. So as long as you can get past your own confidence, you can easily do it. Mm -hmm. So the going back to your question about how we keep people engaged is people have been asking me for years about the things that I do in person, like providing a style seminar or talking to them about the books that I use to research vintage jewelry and everything. And I said, that's it. I said, we're going to go for it. I said, these are things that we already know. They're already basically in our tool bag of things that we do live and in person when we do events or when we even pitch a brand or we even get called by a brand to carry this topic. Since the community is already looking for something to fill their time, let's let them know that it exists. Mm -hmm. And so that's one way that we've pivoted or one way that we've kept people engaged is we've actually made the time to provide things. Whereas it's like normally I'd be doing in-person shows. I would be going places. I would be hosting live events. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be going into stores and I'd be doing some merchandising for them while working with my product. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not doing that right now. So we consciously looked at my schedule and said, when can we fit this in? Mm -hmm. The next thing is uh, we have still, because of being a product-based business, we had really already planned out our next six to eight weeks versus of merchandise. Just full out being a business person and having to really focus on the cost of goods sold we had already planned in advance and things had already been purchased. So there was no reason to hold back from giving it to the customers right now. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your top tips for staying consistent to the lady bosses that are viewing? So my top tips for staying top three tips, excuse my me. top one, put it in your schedule. Put it, put it in your schedule the same way that you would have to drop and pick up your kids at school because you know that you're going to get in trouble that you yeah. don't. Or put it in your schedule the way that you would have a meeting with a potential person that, that could make a difference in your business. Like if you, if you got the interview, if you're going to sign the deal, treat putting it in your calendar the same way that you would because your customers and your clients and even your followers they are all of your potential people related to your success story, whether mm -hmm. they purchase from you or not. So treat it as if it's a professional thing to do. My next thing is map it out. Just like being consistent and putting it down in your schedule, map it out. Map out the results that you want to get from it. And no detail too small is left 
unturned. So it can even be like, if you need to write in on that consistent schedule that you need to turn on your light box every single time you go live, don't forget to add all the steps. Yeah, that's very important. And then my last thing is tell people you're doing it. Because when you tell people you're doing it, you have to show up and be consistent. Mm -hmm. You can really get yourself in trouble. And yes, things do come up. There are times where I've even had to say like, you know, my kid is in the emergency room right now. I can't go live or, you know, or we have no power or my internet connection is down. Mm -hmm. The more that you do it consistently, at least in terms of showing up, then when you have to tell your community or you have to tell your followers, we got a glitch this week or something else like that, they are going to be understanding about it. Mm -hmm. But if you only show up once a while and then make excuses or you say like, you know, like, oh, I'm just not going to do it this week people have no incentive to continue to follow you. Right. So tell people that you exist. It's also part of your marketing strategy, like mm -hmm. letting people know that you exist. So don't be afraid to hit that invite button because that's an important part of showing up with your consistency is actually letting people know that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. All right, so our viewers who are watching, please feel free to type in any questions that you might have for Veronica and we can get that answered for you. In the meantime, what is in your lady boss toolkit? So what services, I guess, or what platforms do you use besides like your Etsy mm -hmm. or in your Shopify, but what do you use on, on your, on maybe a daily or weekly basis to thrive? For example, do you plan out any social media posts for, via Planoly, later, anything on Pinterest, via Tailwind, et cetera. So what tools do you use? Well, I would say that the tools that I use most frequently are Trello. I use mm -hmm. Trello for project management. Uh, we, have, we have played around with other ones, but I really like things that are drag and drop. And I'm yeah. also a very linear person. So like mm -hmm. I said, I like laying out things in steps. Um, it feels really good to cross things off. Mm -hmm. So even with like Trello, it kind of gives you the ability to move it to the next column. Yes, uh, love the it. So I really like Trello. Uh, we personally, for social media management, because we focus on Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, we like to use Buffer. Yes. And I like using Buffer because it has the bitlies that are already mm -hmm. built in, which really helps you then make more conscious decisions related to both your marketing as well as what people are interacting with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always like to give people more of what they want and that gives me the ability to really see what people want. Mm -hmm. uh, I thing love is, Buffer. I was yeah. just calling the ladies about that on Saturday and I feel like it's the most bang for your buck. Oh yeah. Like, these other services a month. are very yeah. expensive compared. So and you get like a hundred posts per, um, per your social media account. You have right. eight, so it's fifteen dollars. Just FYI, I'm plugging them. No, I'm not their advertising person, but <laughs> I'm not affiliate yet. I need to be, but it's fifteen dollars per month, and you get a hundred posts per social media account. So every Instagram, every Facebook account you link, you have eight that you can link. So definitely check that out. Buffer b u f f e r dot com. That's one of my favorites. And then since we're such a big uh, Facebook Live and also we like to being able to share to other places, of all of the easy to stream streaming services, I really like StreamYard. Mm. We've used Be Live in the past. We've used Zoom in the past. We still mm -hmm. do use Zoom occasionally to connect it to our Facebook Live. But I find StreamYard to be the easiest one. Uh, it's free if you don't mind having the StreamYard logo in mm -hmm. your your um in the corner. But I do mm -hmm. pay for the twenty five dollar a month subscription because it removes the branding. You can share to other streams, like you're saying, like with Buffer, like mm -hmm. you can connect it to everything but Instagram because Instagram is so picky about things. Yes. Like for yeah. example, with the click of the button. I can share something to both my Facebook page and my Facebook group. I can share it to multiple groups if I've been invited to be an admin. Mm -hmm. You can share it on YouTube Live at the same time. Mm, I love that. But the benefit of it is that after the end, you easily be able to have it stored in your library so you can easily download the video to like 
be able to then edit it so that if you want to be able to edit it, you can also strip the audio of it if you want to be able to take it, make it like a podcast. So I find, again, I'm a non oh, that's person. Really huh. uh, this one also makes it really easy to screen share. So mm -hmm. I, I find this one to be the most user friendly and the easiest to connect again on yeah. the go. Oh, I love that. I'm going to have to check yeah. that out myself. Because I'm looking for something where, like you said, you can stream on multiple platforms simultaneously. I love that. Uh, let's see what other questions I have written down for you. Uh, how did you get started partnering with brands like J. Crew, Pottery Barn, and Williams Sonoma? You want to honestly know? Yes. I asked. You reached out. Yes. Yeah. I, I asked. Uh, one was an opportunity. Uh, I really believe in. I really believe in. If an opportunity is knocking, you have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. I, I also like all of those analogies. Also, where you know it talks about how like I sent you an ore and you didn't use it. Like I think sometimes an important part is being able to free up your headspace in mm -hmm. order to see an opportunity presenting itself. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like my partnership with J. Crew or when I worked with them is I was actually getting ready to go to a business conference mm -hmm. and I'm a very intentional person. So I had bought, brought to the store a tray of jewelry that was my own and I was looking for outfits to put with it. Mm -hmm. And the manager literally came up to me and she was like, how do you know what to put with all the stuff that we have here? And I was like, well, I work as a personal stylist and I also curate my own line of vintage jewelry. And she was like, do you think you could do that for our customers? Mm. I, yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, well, would I do it as like an employee? And she's like, no, no, no. She's like, we'd host you for like a trunk show and a pop-up event. And I was like, sure. When can I come? So that's how it happened. And, you know, once you see one opportunity that works with one brand, all you can do is ask, mm -hmm. would you be able to do this too? And so, for example, throughout the years, we have found other brands that have told us yes or no. That's another thing. You can't get hung up on people that say no. Just if you already know that it works, don't be afraid to pitch that idea to somebody else. Because we have had opportunities in which we have successfully done it someplace and then for example that brand or that boutique or something like that has never even thought about it and they're yeah. like oh wow yeah we could totally do that too and so that's one thing that I've really embraced throughout the years and that's how I've gotten quite a few of those brand partnerships is just asking for them I love that do you already have any do you have a uh, press kit a media kit by any chance yes yes I didn't have a media kit until I had someone that worked on my team that specialized in graphic design because mm -hmm. again i'm not a techie person and mm -hmm. i also don't know how to build that stuff so once we had somebody here who really specialized in that and she's a virtual assistant so she's not just like my virtual assistant she does mm -hmm. it for a number of people and things like that i just gave her the words and she turned it into something pretty nice so i love that um, I think that is all that I have for you. It looks like we don't have any questions coming in. Um, let me, oh wait, no, we do. I'm sorry. I was at the top here. Um, Kiona, who will be our speaker next week with Rightway Tech Services asks, do you continue to do your video if you have no viewers, the live stream? I think your answer would definitely be yes. Of course. From what you said um, a little bit of earlier. Of course, two important things to remember with that is that the more you do it, the better the reach, the better engagement you get. So even if you don't have anybody viewing, the more you do it, the more Facebook and the more Instagram likes it. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is, is that you may choose to do a video at a time that is more convenient for you, but your followers may choose to watch it later. And so <laughs> you may see that even though you only had a reach of like, 100 people at like noon and then go back and see that at like nine o'clock at night it's reached like 800 people previous mm -hmm. to everything with COVID-19 many times I would record videos during the day because it was quiet in my house mm -hmm. but at five o'clock or six o'clock my followers would be getting on the train so they would be watching a video on their commute on the way home mm -hmm. so of course 
Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, is that you can reshare things as a watch party later or the next day or several days later and catch people at a time then when they're watching it. I was just um, looking at or listening rather to this podcast from a reseller who was stating that not to get hung up on likes or views, but more so engagement. Yeah. And there's a way for you to check, which I did not know this previously, but there's a way for you to check your engagement. I think it's called IQ. Um, I can look that up and I'll be sure to share that. Um, but it's really, really cool. And like, you can see, it's like you want it to be above 2%. Right. So, have you heard of this before? Yes. Yeah, this is so neat. So I'll definitely be sure to share that resource in our group, Lady Boss Roundtable, Facebook. Thank you. So for you, where can we see you? Where can so we you find can... you? What are your links? Your web, your um, Facebook group. I'm sure everything is vintage meat modern, yeah. right? Everything is vintage meat modern. You can find me on Facebook in my Facebook group. You can find, which is where it's really fun. Lots of awesome women hang out in there. But you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on my Facebook group. You can find me on Instagram. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Sweet. Do you have any offer for our viewers? Sure. We would love for you to take 15% off your first purchase over at VintageMeetModern.com. Uh, it's really easy for you to be able to sign up right on our website to become on our VIP list. And I can guarantee you that every piece that we pick is hand curated for you. So you can feel really good and really confident about the pieces that you pick. And also, I really encourage people to sign up for our VIP list because we always, when we do, we don't really specialize in courses, but we do a lot of style workshops that are very empowering for women. And we always offer those at a discounted rate. So we have our latest workshop going out right now, and it's $19 instead of $29. Okay. So when they sign up for your VIP list, do they automatically get that 15%? How, okay. They do. Perfect. Yep. Well, I would love to. We make it really easy. We, we're, we, we make it really easy. We want to keep it really simple for everybody. We know how busy women are. Perfect. Well, I would love to partner with you um, with a different brand called I Am Chicago Fashion. I plan on doing something similar to this and would love to get tips from you to share with others with, about styling, et cetera. So I'll be in touch with you about that. That's awesome. That's our jam. So yes. we'd love to partner with you on that. Sounds great. Well, anything else you would like to leave the audience? Uh, I'd say the most important thing is, is that I really am honored to have an opportunity to encourage women during even any kind of round table because it's fun getting to talk about the things that have been successes, <laughs> but I'm always very open about my failures or I should say my setbacks along mm -hmm. the way. So if I could encourage anybody who's here today, I would say also don't be afraid to ask questions mm -hmm. because when your heart is in things for the right reason, not only do you want to cheer other women on, mm -hmm. but you also want to be real with them and remind yeah. them that it's okay to have setbacks too uh, and that your setbacks eventually also lead up to successes. So I want to celebrate everyone. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much, Veronica, for your time. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Have a great afternoon. This was a ton of fun. Yes, likewise. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, ladies. I am going to just let you know. It was so much fun talking to Veronica, right? I hope that you all learned something, got some type of nuggets from her, some type of jewels from her. Um, we will, again, this is our very first Table Talk Tuesday, so we will continue to have it every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Our speaker next week is Kiona Wright with Right Way Tax Services, and she'll be talking about um, setting up your small business. I have to cheat here a little bit. Setting up your small business, um, choosing the correct entity type, tax implications for that entity type and business credit. She also completely dropped incredible jewels on Saturday with everything that's going on with the tax loan, with the PPP, and I forgot the other one. It's like E-S-I-D-L, something like that. So she is incredible, and she will drop many, many jewels next week, Tuesday. I mean, it's back here at 12 p.m. Central Time. All right? Do you have any questions? anything and if you're interested in speaking there is a link in our bio so just click on that link and i think it's table talk tuesday speaker form 
just submit that and you're automatically in it as long as you know everything looks good as far as your topic um what you like to discuss and i'll give you some tips along the way all right well have a great rest of the day and don't forget to join us lady boss roundtable facebook group all right have a good one